then when the lens is so adjusted that the position of the first image if it is falling within its focus then this eye lens it exactly works as a simple microscope so as a result of that the final image formation will be i will be showing here one ray of light parallel to the principal axis it goes this side after refraction but don't draw this ray right now to take the second ray which is passing through the center of the second lens that is the eye lens it goes undeviated now uh, finalize fix the position of the final image it can be here so first fix this image position of the image then you extend this ray backwards that means this will be your final image then join this point with this point like this and you extend this that means this is the first ray and this is the second refracted ray in this particular case so if i label it then this is a b which is the original object then this is the first image this is a dash this is b dash then the final image will be a double dash this b double dash the images uh, and the distances this is the final image distance it is at least distance of distinct vision this is the object distance u okay so this ray diagram is very important ray diagram and uh, uh, we are looking from uh, this side the angles here the angle made by the final image at the eye this is represented as a beta when the object is placed at the position of the final image here then whatever angle it makes it subtends at the eye this is represented as alpha therefore the formula for magnifying power starts with m equal to ratio of beta to alpha uh, since this instrument has a uh, two lenses both the lenses contribute to the magnifying power combined magnifying power and the combined magnifying power is equal to the product of the individual lenses so therefore m equal to mo multiplied by me where mo is the magnifying power of the objective lens me is the magnifi magnifying power of the eye lens so this is equal to v upon u where v is the image distance for the objective lens u is the object distance multiplied by me this is this me is the magnifying power of the eye lens which is exactly working as the simple microscope as we have already studied for this the magnifying power is 1 plus d by f therefore i write 1 plus d upon fe so this is the formula for magnifying power of a compound microscope suppose if u means the object is placed very close to the focus of the objective lens means as u tends to fo uh, then this v tends to l that means the final image distance will be approximately equal to the distance between the two lenses so in this particular case m becomes this a uh, l upon fo multiplied by 1 plus d by fe now this is the equation which explains as why we should select objective of shorter focal length and eyepiece of larger focal length so this is the final equation now the resolving power of an optical instrument like uh, microscope and telescope it is defined as the ability of the instrument to show two objects which are very nearby as distinctly so this resolving power is written as rp equal to in case of the microscope only it is 2 mu sin theta upon lambda where lambda is the light of the wavelength used mu is the refractive index of the medium between the objective lens and the object so if i want to increase the resolving power of the microscope we have to decrease the wavelength of the light used and we have to increase the medium uh, we have to replace the medium whose refractive index is more like if the air is replaced by the oil then ref resolving power of the microscope increases the next optical instrument is 
the astronomical telescope. This instrument is used to see very far objects like the celestial objects. The construction and working of astronomical telescope, it depends upon the where the final image is formed. In the first case, I will be explaining you with the help of a ray diagram how this telescope works when the final image is formed at infinity. So, for this purpose, again I have drawn here one principal axis. On that, I will be placing one convex lens of a bigger focal length, larger focal length. This, ob this lens is the objective lens. This is focused towards the object. Since the object is very far of distance, therefore the parallel rays will come from that and few rays I will be taking here. One ray of light which is passing through the center of the lens goes undeviated. The second ray which is parallel to the first one, but they are these two are not parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, it is meeting at this point again. That means the point of meeting will be the plane of the focus. It is not the focus, it is the plane of the focus and therefore it is F or O I will be writing. This is the first image. Let us call it as A and B. We will use the second lens, convex lens and if the position of the second convex lens is so adjusted that this first image is exactly at the focus of the eye lens. That means this point is both F O and F E. Then we will get the final image at infinity in this way. You take the first ray which is passing to the center of the lens, it goes straight. Now second ray of light parallel to the principal axis and it emerges out here this side parallel to the first ray. And if these two are extended this side, then we will get the final image at infinity. Final image at infinity. So we will be looking from uh, this side. So this is known as the diagram and the concept working of the astronomical telescope with the final image is formed at infinity. So this adjustment is actually called as the normal adjustment. So in normal adjustment, the final image will be at infinity. So here the angle, this angle is alpha, this angle is also alpha. So angle made subtended by the object huh, at the objective lens is alpha and the angle subtended by the final image at the eye, this angle is beta. Again we can continue the derivation and lastly we get the magnifying power of this astronomical telescope in the normal adjustment will be m equal to f o upon f e. So to increase the magnifying power of this instrument, the focal length of objective must be more and focal length of eyelids must be smaller. This is the way this astronomical telescope in the normal adjustment works. Now the astronomical refracting type telescope, this is also refracting type telescope. Now the same astronomical refracting type telescope will be used in the other way. The final image when it is formed at a least distance of distinct vision, in that case how the ray diagram can be drawn, how can we explain formation of image, let me explain. So again we have, I proceed in the same way. I have taken here one convex lens of larger focal length, one ray of light coming from the object at infinity, passing through the center of the lens goes straight undeviated. Second ray of light which is again parallel to the first ray of light, after refraction it meets at a point on the focal plane. So this will be the final, uh, this will be the uh, first image of the object. So this first portion is same in both the refracting uh, astronomical type telescope. Now the second part, second part now differs. So in this part what we do, let us move this second lens a bit more towards the objective lens. So in that case the focus, earlier it was at the point F O, now it shifts towards left side, that means towards the objective lens. So the same thing I will use here, this point is already F O, when the eye lens is moved towards the objective lens, then earlier F V was here, now it goes to this point. That means this lens is little bit uh, closer to the objective lens. So this lens is the eye lens. Now the formation of image, final image now. 
one ray of light traveling parallel to the principal axis and second ray of light passing through the center of the lens this goes undeviated now this part of the lens will be acting as a simple microscope now because when the object is placed between the center of the lens and its a principal focus then the lens will form its image on the same side which is erect and enlarged now again decide the position of the image so you extend this ray of light up to uh, this point so this will be the final image now connect these two points with the help of the scale and you extend this light this ray so this will be the ray diagram showing the formation of final image now the position of this image from the eye lens will be at least distance of distinct position so this adjustment already i call it as the normal adjustment you can also call it as the far point adjustment because the final image is formed at far point now here the final image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision and it is also called as a near point therefore this is called as a near point adjustment so in this case the formula for magnifying power is uh, f o the formula for magnifying power in this case is f o upon f e multiplied by 1 plus f e upon uh, d f o upon this is f e actually so these two diagrams these two telescopes they will come in the examination compulsorily so students please practice them uh, thoroughly you have to learn these because ray diagrams with all leveling carries more marks in your board examination the formula for uh, resolving power of this astronomical telescope is a upon 1.22 lambda where lambda is the wavelength of the light used and a represents the diameter of the objective lens used it is also called as the aperture of the lens if we want to increase the resolving power of this astronomical refracting type telescope we have to increase the aperture because of this reason you can see the telescopes with larger diameter of the objective lens or mirror they form the final image of very high brightness and intensity this lambda can be decreased like this resolving power can be increased the last topic of ray optics is reflecting type telescope this was designed by a newton therefore it is also called as a newtonian reflecting type telescope the construction working this telescope consists of a very large concave shaped objective mirror its diameter is very large when this is focused towards the distant object the parallel rays and they come from the object and they fall on this mirror after falling on the mirror they get reflected they get reflected towards it's a focus but before they could meet at this point focus they are interrupted by one plane mirror so this plane mirror again reflects these two reflected rays towards the eyepiece and from this eyepiece we can see the bright image of the object at infinity at far off distance so this arrangement is called as the newtonian uh, telescope so if it comes in the examination for two marks how to write a newtonian telescope consists of a large concave shaped objective lens focused towards the object the parallel rays coming from the object will be focused towards its focus before they could meet at that point again they are reflected by a plane mirror towards the telescope and from that uh, towards the eyepiece towards the eyepiece and through that eyepiece we can see the bright object so this uh, reflecting newtonian type telescope is uh, free from chromatic and spherical aberrations because the chromatic aberration takes place only in lenses since we have not used here lens therefore the question of form question of the chromatic aberration is ruled out whereas instead of the perfect concave mirror if you use the parabolic mirror uh, then spherical aberration can be removed so therefore this telescope has an advantage over the refracting type 
astronomical telescopes. With this, optical instruments and the ray optics has been completed. Students, I hope uh, you have understood whatever we try to uh, teach you. It all depends upon how you practice, how you store these things in your mind. So, to have a good mark, to score good marks, please uh, uh, write well and uh, while answering, uh, read the question carefully because astronomical telescope, reflecting telescope, refracting type, they confuse. So, read the question carefully according to that, please answer this question. But do not forget to draw the diagrams with the all arrow marks indicating the direction, otherwise it has no meaning. Thank you.